So here's a question from the International Chemistry Olympiad 2019 preparatory problems and it's titled synthesis of the intermediate ruthenium complex G and there was a, a paragraph before this but uh, I just really wanted to uh, you to appreciate the organic chemistry behind making such ruthenium complexes and we are go going to solve problems one to six of this problem and we will solve the rest later. So the first problem is draw the structure of the first reaction intermediate resulting from the action of KOH on compound A. So KOH is a base and it, it acts on this compound, which is a carbonyl compound. And we know that since it's a strong base and it, it's with alcohol, which gives you an ethoxide ion, which is an even stronger base, this ethoxide would go and snatch away a proton from here. And we know that car alpha hydrogens of carbonyl compounds are pretty acidic when you compare them to such high basic, such highly basic uh, ions. And so the first intermediate that you get when KOH acts on this is just the conjugate base of this. And the answer to part one will be the following. It will be a carbonyl compound and there will be a negative charge right here due to the lone pair that's still left. And there are the bromobenzyl rings. And there is the other one. And this is the first intermediate that you have. And uh, we can also draw resonance structures of this. So the other one, which shows you the other resonance structure of this enolate ion, that will be the following. It will be O minus, and then the double bond that came right here, and then the benzene ring with the bromine substituent, and the other side is just simply that. And that's the first intermediate. The second question is, in these types of reactions, can KOH be used in catalytic amounts? And if you closely look at this reaction, it looks like an aldol type reaction. And we know that in an aldol reaction, and we know that in an adult reaction, bases are used. And if you closely look at the mechanism that we will shortly look, we will know that yes, KOH can be used in catalytic amounts. And that can be something that you can keep in mind that in such types of reactions, bases can be used or acids can be used in catalytic amounts. We will come to this in a few moments. Draw a structure of a possible reagent D that would lead to the formation of the alcohol E from C. And so uh, we just have to draw what reagent we might as well use here. And then we have to draw and we have to figure out what F, F dash and F double dash are. And it's given that these are a mixture of the three regio isomers. That is, these are isomers, but the position of the newly attached substituent is different. And they all have the molecular formula C36H23Br5. And then uh, we have to figure out what the mechanism is. And the fifth question is to draw these structures. And uh, the sixth also is similar to that. So let's first write a mechanism for this reaction. So once this intermediate is formed, this next thing it's going to do is it's going to attack the other carbonyl. And the other carbonyl is this. I'll draw that in a different color. So it will be double bond O and then the bromobenzyl rings. And yeah, there you go. And now this negative, this negative lone pair will come and attack on this carbonyl oxygen. That's what we know from carbonyl chemistry is that this C is quite electrophilic. And once that is done, once we do that, this gives us this gives us the following ion. It we can just start to draw the bond right here only. So this will be a double bond forms here, and then another bond forms here, and you have an O minus here, and that's what this first thing does. And the next thing, the next reaction will be will be when this an enolate ion forms on this side and so the negative charge comes here and then this attacks this other carbonyl and that does the same thing and this gives you a five-membered cyclic ring 
so it looks something like this and then O minus coming here and now since this is in alcohol and this is also an alkoxide ion we might as well just snatch away an H from the ethanol and that will give us an alcohol this alcohol will be will be something like this let me just draw this structure right again so this is OH this is OH and that's the two benzyl rings all right and this is the alcohol that we I'm talking about now as I said since OET minus is regenerated we can as we can look at that and we can say that this process will continue on and we will never run out of we will never run out of the KOH and that's why it can be used in catalytic amounts since OET minus was the thing that snatched the proton from the first in the first place and that gave us ethanol when it did so and then again we took it away from it so this sort of chain reaction will continue occurring and that will give us this compound now compound c has a double bond here and we know that there is a way to dehydrate alcohols and we i don't need to draw the mechanism for that it's pretty easy that just gives you that just gives you two double bonds in place of the ohs right here so there you go that's what c is so question one is done question two is done we ne now need to uh, figure out what d would be so if you look closely if you look closely this carbonyl right here except for that everything else remains the same so the only thing happening is an addition at the carbonyl and, and we are adding we are adding a carbon we are adding a carbon containing entity at, at this ketone, this conjugated ketone. And the best way to do that is using Grignard reagents or using orga other organometallic reagents. Um, the second most popular one will be organolithiums. So why don't we just do that? If we want to add, if we want to add this, this substituent right here, if we take the following the following Grignard reagent, which is this is quite problem three we're working on. If we take the following Grignard reagent, then this will dissociate into MgBr plus and Me followed by this 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 toluene anion. So I, I think it should be called a toluide anion, but whatever it is. This will attack this carbonyl, and that will give us that will give us this alcohol after being protonated, and that's what we can say D is. The other possible one, as I said, can be an organolithium. So that will be Me. Again, draw the toluene and then put an Li right here. That also does the same thing. So I guess three is done. In the third step. In the third step, E to F plus F prime plus F double prime, compound E is treated with HBr in glacial acetic acid to give the corresponding product as a mixture of three regioisomers and their enantiomers. So let's try what let's try to figure out what happens. So C right here, let me draw that out a bit bigger, or this will be quite big. So there is the toluene substituent we were talking about. Here is a five-membered ring, and they have double bonds right here. There is an OH right here, and there are all these bromophenyl, bromobenzyl, whatever you want to call it, rings attached right there. Now... This is being reacted with HBr in glacial acetic acid. 
And we know that this is a very acidic environment. HBr is quite a strong acid, and it is dissolved in another acid, which is not as strong, but still, it's better than dissolving in water. And we know that when acids react with alcohols, they first protonate the OH. So through some, some sort of proton transfer, you have an OH attacking an HBr, and that gives us OH2+, plus. and this is a good leaving group, water is a good leaving group. And when this leaves, when this leaves, it gives you a cation, and that cation looks something like this. And since it's quite delocalized, it, its formation will be quite favored. You have all these benzyl rings here, this, the, here is a conjugated system. Well, while it's anti-aromatic, it's it still has resonance and since we are given that this forms, we can somehow consider that we it's somehow considered a possibility that this is a stable cation. Now there are three regioisomers, and that means that there are three different three different spots where the other bromine minus the bromide anion that's left can attack. If it just attacks right here, and that would give that would give. Let me just first draw the five membered ring right here. That would give this bromine. And let me just use X and Y for for these substituents. Let's let's denote this substituent by X, the one with the bromine, and let us denote this substituent, the one with the methyl, as Y. And so you will have this five membered ring, and you have Y, X, X x that's one but that's only one of the possible one of the possible one of the possible products the other thing that can happen is a delocalization and that would give you the following cation that this plus charge would come here so the plus charge would be here and that's what you get and the other when bromide attacks here you will get a bromine here and an X, these two double bonds. There is a Y there, there is an X there, another X, another X. And both of these compounds note that they are different. Uh, bromine right now is connected to a carbon that's connected to Y, Y is this. And here it's connected to a carbon that's connected to X. So that's the second one, but we need three. And well, this is just, uh, we just have to continue what we started doing. Another delocalization would give you the following cation. The plus charge would now come here. It will look something like this. And when the bromide attacks here now, that gives you Y comes here, and you have double bond, double bond, and you have X, 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 and you have an X here again, and there you have Br. Now, you, we need to differentiate these two compounds because surely one and three are different, but it might not be completely obvious as to why two and three are different. So if you look closely, the XBr carbon, which is this one, is only one carbon away from Y in this case. However, in this case, it's two carbon away. The closest, the closest distance between them is two carbons away. So surely this is different. So one is different from two, two, and two is different from three. And since they all differ by the position where Br is attached, these are the three regioisomers we are looking for. We can verify their molecular formula. So if you just draw one of these, so that's one of them. And the molecular formula given here is C36, C36, H23, and Br5. So there are five BRs, and that's very easy to verify. What about the Cs? So there are six carbon in a in a in a phenyl ring, in a benzyl ring. So there are five such rings right here. So that gives you five times six is thirty. There are six more to count. There are five carbons right here. So that gives you thirty-five. And there is one more. There is a methyl group right here that also contains 
let me just write it as CH3, that also contains one carbon, so that's why C36 holds up. What about the hydrogens then? So there are three hydrogens on this methyl group, so three, and on each of these rings, there are four hydrogens. All of the, all the both of the other positions are occupied, so there are four hydrogens on either, each of these rings. So, and there are five such rings. So three plus four into five that gives you twenty-three. We have already got there, but just I just need to verify that there are no carbons other than the ones that we have already counted, and the fact is there aren't. This double bond needs to have two substituents on both sides. It has. This single bond needs to have four substituents. And it does have that. So we don't need any other carbons right here. So the molecular formula is correct. And that's what we are going with as what are F, F prime and F double prime. The fourth question asks, select the appropriate type of mechanism involved in the step E to F plus F prime plus F double prime among the following choices. And we know that this is this is a nucleophilic substitution, and it's a unimolecular nucleophilic substitution. It's an SN1 type of reaction. Why? Because there is there is involvement of the formation of the carbocation, and that's the only rate determining step. Once the carbocation is formed, Br- will quickly react with it to form the final product. And so SN1 is the appropriate mechanism. The next question is give the structure of the reaction intermediate accounting for the formation of these three regi isomers. And this is the intermediate, the cation is the intermediate that gave these three isomers. So that one's also done, fourth is also done. The sixth question simply asks, draw the structure of the three isomers, F, F prime and F double prime. And we just did that. If you want to draw out an expanded form, be my guest, draw X and Y and bring out a beautiful compound. The next parts of these problems relate more towards the chemistry of the, the inorganic chemistry, the chemistry of inorganic materials, and that will be covered in a separate video.